Yo, it's JB back here with another tutorial, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a 25-acre sized battle royale map in Blender with a moon surface texture. Now, this is from a request that I got in a comment, so um, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So, to do this, you want to go ahead and organize your material, so go ahead and create a new folder on your desktop. We're just going to call this the 25-acre battle royale map. We'll do just fine. We're going to open that folder up. Now go ahead and make a textures folder. So we'll go ahead and put in textures, and then we're going to put in a second folder here called textures underscore two. And I'll show you why in a second. But open a brand new file on Blender, and then go ahead and delete everything on the scene like we always do. So go ahead and press X and delete. Press Shift A, then under mesh like a plane. Blender uses Blender grid divisions for measurements. So this is going to be. Um, just like the size, for instance, is one by one by one. So you can see how that works. And to actually use real life uh, measurements, such as feet, uh, meters, yards, etc., what you want to do is you want to go ahead and press tab on your keyboard while the plane is selected. Go to this little arrow here, and then we have measurements. Now you can find edge length, edge angle, face area, and face angle. Now, for our purposes, we're going to be using face area because acres is an area measurement. So go ahead and Check it out, this is four meters squared. Now the 3D cursor is being in the way, so I'm gonna go ahead and just move it out of the way for now. But yeah, you can see this is four meters squared. Now as you can see in this converter I used, 25 acres is equal to 101,171.4 square meters. Now what we need to do is make this value the area of this plane. So just press S on the keyboard and start bringing it way up. Just keep going, and keep going. And if you have your resolution on YouTube high enough, you can see the numbers that's in the middle of the screen. And that's just my um, area in meters squared. Just keep moving it up until you can get the right number. And remember it's 101,171.4. Now I got it to be exact one time, but it's a little bit difficult when you're measuring on Blender because you can't type an exact value. You have to scale until you see the right numbers up here on your screen. So I'm just going to keep working with this. All right, so this is pretty close. This is 101,176 meters squared, which is pretty close to 25 acres, almost exactly so. Um, anyway, so we have our 25 acre sized plane here, and as you can notice that when we move in and out, we see we are starting to cover it, and that's just because Blender's, um, Blender's current end clipping is 1,000 1, meters, so just go ahead and increase this value. I'm going to say 90,000 works just fine, and um, yeah, we have our plane here. Let's go move the cursor back to the world origin, so I'm going to press Shift S, and then select cursor to world origin, and then we have our scene set up. Now. To get textures on this uh, plane here, we need to go to um, a certain website. Now, I have a link in the description, so just go ahead and click that. And that goes to textures.com and this page here. Now go ahead and create an account if you haven't already on textures.com. This is an excellent website for Blender users, for Unity users, for all kinds of people who want to do this kind of work. It offers free textures, and so go ahead and jump right into there and then um, create your account and let's go ahead and get into it. So on this page here, we have um, these, different, um, these are different images here. And we only need to use three of them, so just go ahead and download the Albedo right here. Also, there are premium um, premium sized pictures, but they don't worry about them. Just go ahead and use the ones that are free. And I would recommend using the larger scale, like the medium, for instance. Go ahead and download this one. Uh, skip the height, we won't, we won't need this. Go ahead and download the normal texture and then the roughness texture. Once you're done downloading them, go ahead and import them into your textures folder. Now, before we get started, let's go ahead and select our first texture here. Um, right click it and select the open with paint. And once you're here, you can go ahead and scale this outward a bit. Now what we're doing here, we're just basically doubling the amount of texture in this picture because it's not quite enough. If you think about it, for this amount of size or this amount of size here, this is not going to cover 25 acres very well because it's just too, it's just not enough texture. So um, now this is not exactly a necessary step. It's just, it's just, it makes it look a lot better. So click the select button, copy and paste rotate horizontally and then this drop down menu we're, we're going to select transparent selection move it over a bit and then line it up here try to get as close as you can okay then we're going to select all of this copy and paste rotate vertically and scale this down a bit to the size of the image right here all right, now we're going to go ahead and press File, and then Save As, Other Formats, go to TIFF, go to Textures, and just find your Textures underscore 2, 
and we're going to type in um, uh, color texture save let's go ahead and import the second texture which paste from we'll go ahead and uh, find our our um, our texture uh, we're gonna use the normal map this time so let's go ahead and import that and then select copy and paste rotate horizontally move it over some and repeat the same steps Okay, once you finish saving these uh, pictures, you can go ahead and close Paint, um, open Blender back up, and then, um, yeah, let's go ahead and open another window. I'm going to select the Shader Editor. I press N, we won't need that. And then select the plane here, or make sure the plane is selected. Go to Materials, and then select New. This is going to add in a principal VSDF, along with the material output. Keep these, we're going to go ahead and uh, press Shift A, and then add in an image texture. Add another one, and another one. Then add in a normal map. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring the color value here to the base color here. And then press open, find your your um, your textures folder, go to textures two, open the color texture tiff, and then we're going to press Z. While your mouse is in this window, press Z and then eight open render view and you can just see your texture here um, you may want to go ahead and press shift A and then add in a sunlight just to get a general basic view on how this is going to look so just rotate it a little bit try to get some angle on the sun whatever and then anyway you want to select the plane again and find your image texture here open it up we're going to go ahead and select our um, our normal map so um, just go ahead and move this node below here. Attach the color to the color here, and then attach this normal to the normal value as well. There. And you can see we have a much better um, surface there. Now, for this middle node here, select Open, and then go to your folder again, find the reference value, and then open the image, bring the color to the reference value. And that will give you the roughness of the texture. All right, looks like we're done with the shader editor. We can go ahead and close this window, so just close that. And now it's time to sculpt this. Now to do this, what we need to do is um, go to tab, and that goes to edit mode. And you can see that there's only four vertices on this. Now as of now, if we tried to sculpt this, we would uh, wind up having some issues because there's nothing to sculpt on. There's four vertices that we would move around. Uh, to put more vertices or more geometry in this object, let's go ahead and press A to select all the edges here, or all the vertices. And then we will right click the, um, the plane, Select subdivide. Now keep repeating this process until you find the number of vertices that you want. Um, I would recommend not going too high because it's going to slow down the um, going to slow down Blender a lot. So just find a good number of vertices. This is not enough because we're going to have these um, these really boxy corners and things. So just keep doing it until you find a decent number of vertices, which is probably pretty close. I might want to go one more time. Okay, that's pretty good because you know it's plenty of vertices, but it's not too much to slow down Blender. So I'm going to go with this. I'll press Tab to um, to exit the edit mode, then go over to object mode right here, select sculpt mode, and then select the grab tool, which is right here. And you can use all these other tools. I just recommend using grab because it's the fastest and it gets the most done, I believe, when shaping terrain. So from here, you're going to go ahead and want to just play around with it, you know? Use F on the keyboard to scale up your brush. Um, you can use left click to move around your vertices there. See, we just made a bit of a hill right there. And um, yeah, pretty much just everything that you would normally do when you're sculpting an object. So um, this is a battle royale map. So the edges here are going to want to have some form of a mountainous terrain on the edges. And that's because you want your players to stay inside the inside the um, inside the 25 acre map. Um, obviously, if, you, if you're making a battle royale game, you're going to want to put invisible walls on the sides here to keep players from falling off the map. And um, let's go ahead and get started uh, sculpting. So on the corners especially, let's go ahead and make some, uh, some mountains on the end here.
All right, looks like I'm pretty much done uh, sculpting here. You sculpt as long as you feel like you should. This is completely artistic. There's nothing mathematical about this. Just keep going at it. And then, um, yeah, just as you can see, I have like a bit of a mountainous terrain in the back here with some mountains in the middle, you know, a valley right here and things. Just some random, some random terrain to make this look realistic. So um, when you're done, uh, you can go ahead and press the sculpt mode and bring it back to object mode. And you can see that you have your 25 acre map here. Um, texture on and all that stuff. If you want to, you can go ahead and see what it would look like with a um, with a black um, the black sky as you would have in space. Um, you can also mess with the sun um, the sun brightness with the strength right here. You know, higher values bring you know more brightness and lower values bring less. So just you know, have you have you like that? I'll say 0.5 is probably to be the closest to what I'm looking for. Um, you can also go to, um, to your sun here and then bring more of an angle on it if you'd like, or less of an angle on the light. I prefer to have a bit, you know, a bit of an angle to emphasize the shadows from the mountains and hills and valleys and things. So, um, and of course you can give it some color too, some some yellow sun, some blue sun, or whatever, just whatever you feel like is necessary. All right, um, that's pretty much it for this part. Um, if you want to go ahead and see what it would look like from an FPS perspective. Go ahead and press Shift A and then add in a camera. Press G and Z and move it out. There we go. Press zero on the number pad to bring it to your um yeah to, to bring it to view. And then we're going to select the camera right here if it's not already selected. Bring the focal length uh, value down. I want to say probably about 20 just because this is more of an FPS kind of uh, focal length. And then I would recommend going to the viewport display, going to the this value and bringing it to one. Make this black around the edges. Then select view, and then under navigation, select walk navigation. And this basically turns your um, viewport into an FPS perspective. You can even use the letters W, A, S, and D for movement, like you normally would in an FPS uh, game, just like that. Um, I apologize for the frame rate, it's pretty bad, I don't know why, it's just because it's loading a lot of textures along with the terrain. So anyway, um, holding down a shift and W makes you run, and W is to walk. And all that stuff, but um, yeah, this is pretty much how your train is going to look in your game as you would walk around it in it from a first person perspective. So, we have our mountains in the back there, we've got our valley that we're actually currently in, and um, yeah, this is 25 acres of size. The material does seem to be a bit um, not very detailed if, you, if you're really up close to it, which is kind of an issue. If you feel like it's you know, if it's just not detailed enough and you'd like to do more with it. Then feel free to go ahead and um, continue doing what we did in Paintbrush earlier, um, concerning the uh, the sizing and the scaling. Just you know, going through, you know, doubling the size here, and then just copying, and pasting, and uh, rotating and all that stuff. Um, yeah, feel free to do that if it's not large enough or it's not enough detail. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. I think it looks I think it looks good enough. And um, yeah, this is this is how it should look in your um, in your game. And uh, yeah, to export this into an FBX, um, into an FBX file, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and make sure that your scene only contains your plane. So just go ahead and delete your camera and your sun lamp. Now, if your um, if your viewport's being really slow, then you can just go ahead and press Z and then go to six, which goes to your solid view. And you can actually get a, kind of a good look on, on how your train looks from here. But yeah, anyway, so to export this, just go to File. And if I were you, I'd go ahead and just save this. <laughs> this is save the Blender file. You don't want to lose all this work you just did. Anyway, just go to File and then go to Export. Select FBX here. And then when you go to your um, Output folder here, I guess we'll just take it to our, um, our Battle Royale map folder. And then you can just type in, let's say, Battle Royale map your FBX and then select the export FBX button here and that will export it you can go ahead and close your blender um, your blender file and then you go ahead and find your um, yeah your your battle royale map FBX and this is your FBX file now you can use this um, this file in the 3d viewer that you have on your Windows 10 you can use it in unity um, you can use it pretty much anywhere that you would like to uh, to display your 3d model and um, yeah, that's, well, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if any questions, put it in the comments. And um, if it was helpful to you, then click the like button. And if you're new to the channel, then hit the subscribe button. I'll be seeing you.